the Zack Files, Evil Queen Tut and the Great Ant Pyramids by Dan Greenberg. Chapter 1. I happen to have a thing about books. I mean they creep me out, but one day I shrank down to the size of a book and I hung out with them in the park. That kind of experience always makes you change your mind about things. Okay, I think I might be going too fast or for you here. Probably what I should do first is tell you who I am and jump like that. So here's what you need to know. My name my name is Zach. I go to the Horace High School for boys in New York City. I'm ten and a half. My folks are divorced, which is a drag. I spend half my time with each. I wasn't with either one of them when this box thing began though. Here's how it happened. We were having a class picnic in Central Park. Our science teacher, Mrs. Common Levin, gave us all this box, all this huge and magnifying glasses. We were supposed to crawl down and look at nature up close. My best friend, Spencer Sharp, was there. He's the smartest kid in the class. Maybe the smartest kid in the whole school. Vernon Matifol was there too. He is the richest kid in the school. He never lets you forget it. Vernon is kind of fat. He also sweats a lot. And when he's mad at you, he sits on you. He is not my favorite person, but you could probably tell that. Andrew Clancy came along too. He's this really tall kid who's always trying to tell me. Whatever I do, he's always done He's always done it before or better. There were maybe 15 other kids from my class, but I don't feel like listening all their names right now. Mrs. Connell Levin told us to start using our magnifying glasses. Vernon began poking around in the grass with his. Oh, and so, said Vernon, I went over to look at them through my magnifying glass. But before I could check them out, Verna started to stop on them. I stopped him in my mid stop. What are you doing? asked Vernon angrily. Don't stop on those things, I said. Why not? Because the ants probably went to a lot of trouble to build those hills, I said. I may be not be the crazy about bugs, but they have rights to. Spencer came over to the ant hills. Did you know that most ants are females? All the workers are, anyway. And they have a queen who's a whole lot bigger than the workers. Who cares, said Vernon. Box are box and they de deserve to be stopped. Spencer bent down over the hills and looked at them through his magnifying glass. That's strange, said Spencer. These ant hills are not the usual shape. I bent down and took a peek too. They kind of look like pyramids, I said. Why is that? I figure if anybody knew the answer of that, it would be Spencer. I don't know, said Spencer, but they're different from any I've ever seen. Large, yelled Mrs. Common Levin. We raised over and spread out blankets. Blankets. Mrs. Common Levin had brought a big basket with, a, with all sorts of food peanut butter and jelly sandwich, plain peanut butter sandwich, plain jelly sandwich, plain bread sandwich, and lemonade. For this, she promised us a big surprise. <coughs> Spencer and I were sure the surprise was going to be Len and Larry's ice cream. That's our favorite. Once we actually won a contest to sync up a new flavor of Len and Larry's. Our flavor was cashew cashew gasoline, but that's another story. When we finished our sandwiches, Mrs. Common Levin opened up a big plastic jar. Class, she said, here's your surprise dessert, chocolate covered ants. Mrs. Common Levin had a slight smile on her face. All right, said Verna. She's not kidding, said Spencer. Mrs. Common Levin nodded. In some countries, they're a real trip. 
Everybody started making gagging and barfing sounds. Mrs. Common Eleven kept right on smiling. Mrs. Common Eleven is nice, but she's definitely strange. She wears work boots all the time, even to dress up parties. And on weekends, she works in a morgue, cutting up dead bodies. I am not about to eat any chocolate-covered ants," I said. "Chocolate-covered ants are nothing," said Andrew. "I want a chocolate-covered cockroaches." "Well, you don't know what you're missing," said Mrs. Common Eleven, popping some into her mouth. "They happen to be very tasty." Fortunately, Mrs. Common Eleven had brought along dessert for normal people too: blueberries. I love blueberries, but. Only if they have lots of sugar on them, Mrs. Common Eleven. Do you happen to have any sugar? I asked. I'm sorry, Zach. I don't. She said. But why don't you sprinkle a few of the chocolate cover things just the same? I said. Then I no I noticed a plastic bag on the blanket. In it were small packets of sugar, the kind of they give you in coffee shops. I took a couple of packs. Cat and poured one over my blueberries and one into my lemonade. The sugar tasted a little weird. I was almost done with my lemonade when Verna saw me the empty packets. Zach, he cried, "Did you use any of the packets I left lying here?" Just two, I said. Why? That's what the sugar you dork said, Verna. That was shrink away. What the heck is shirk away? A diet powder that my mother bought for me. It was really, really expensive. She's going to be furious at you for taking it. She's going to make you pay me a back too. I'm sorry, I said. I thought it was sugar. Well, I bet it makes you sick," said Vernon nastily. "You're only supposed to take a pinch of it at a time. You use two whole packets, you dork. That's a two-month supply." As a matter of fact, I was starting to feel kind of sick. I thought I may I might puke, but I didn't want Vernon to know. I didn't want to give him this satisfaction. Vernon studied my face. So how are you feeling, Zach? He asked. Great, I said. Perfect. I've never felt better in my whole right life. Then I ran into the bushes. I was sure I was going to poop my guts out. Chapter two. I did a poop, but I felt really weird. My whole body was tingling. My and my. Clothes suddenly seemed a little loose. I made my pants feel like they were a size too big. Like they might fall down, the legs slowed down over my feet. The sleeves of my shirt were too long. Also, the cuffs were over my hands. I looked like I was wearing my dad's clothes. I looked around, then I noticed something else that was strange. The bushes and trees on all sides of me seemed to be growing. What was going on here? And Then it hit me. My clothes were getting bigger. I was getting smaller, a lot smaller. I was shrinking fast, like a pat of butter in a hot frying pan. Before I knew it, I was no more than a foot high. I couldn't believe it. A minute ago, I was a normal-sized boy. Now I was the size of a chihuahua, and I was still sh- shrinking. I stood in the middle of the pile of clothes and had once filmed me. I felt like a circus tent had collapsed on top of me. I lost one sneaker and I was sinking into the other one. First, I put my I put both of my feet inside it. There was a sudden noise in the bushes. Bushes. I looked in the direction of the noise and got the. Shock of my feet on my life. A tiger was creeping slowly through the bushes. It fell. Its belly was slow to the ground, and it was heading straight for me. Chapter three. A tiger. What the heck was a tiger doing in the middle of Central Park? Maybe this was a dream. I was going to make up any second, so 
It didn't matter what I did. I could tell, yell, I could yell at the tiger if I wanted to. Wanted to. On the on the other hand, this might this just might not be a dream. In in which case, yelling at the tiger would be stupid, really stupid. As it crept closer, I realized something. It wasn't it wasn't a tiger at all. It was a cat, a common cat. I love cats. Well, I used to love cats when I was more than six inches tall. The cat crept right up to the top of the sneaker. I was shaking so fast I was able to slide down to the top. I couldn't have been more ten, more than four inches long by now. About the size of a mouse, I thought. I think the cat thought that's what I was, too. It stuck a paw into the sneaker, but it couldn't reach me. Then it pulled its paw back out of the sneaker and walked away. That was some, some close call. I was shaking pretty badly. By now, I figured out that my shirky had something to do with Werner's stupid diet powder. I didn't know what to do, but one thing was sure. If I stayed in the sneaker much longer, I'd be too small to ever climb out of it. Besides, it was really stinky in here. I stood up as tall as I could. I jumped as high as I could. I'm a pretty good basketball player. But I couldn't even reach the top of the sneaker to pull myself up. So I grabbed the laces inside the sneaker and started pulling myself up. Hand, hand over hand. When I got to the top, I picked up. No cat inside. I swung a leg over the top of the sneaker and pulled myself up. The sneaker had grown a lot bigger which meant I had grown a lot smaller. I slide down the front of my of the sneaker. I was twice as big as the lace holes. In other words, I was about as big as a bug. My bare foot could easily fit through the holes. Then it hit me. My foot wasn't the only thing that was bare around here. I was no longer wearing clothes. I was stark naked in the middle of Central Park. And then I saw it, an ant about the size I was. Spencer said most ants are females. I quickly cover up my private parts. Hello there, said a pleasant voice. It was it was the ant. Why are you holding your hands like that? she asked. Because I'm not wearing well clothes, I said. Neither am I, said the ant. Yeah, but you're a bug. I said, so what are you? A boy, I said, no you're not, I am too. Boys are big, boys are like mountains. You're my size, you must be some kind of ball I've never seen before. I saw the cat come after you, so I decided to check. You know, I wasn't always this size, I said, I shrugged. All right, said that, what's your name? That, I said, what's yours? Never titty said the ant, but you can call me Nap for short. She rummaged around on the ground. She picked up a bit of leaf and a blade of grass. Then she tied the leaf around my waist like a grass. This should make you more comfortable, she said. Suddenly, too much larger ants appeared. There, they were about twice the size of Nap. They were pretty scary. They had huge pincers, almost like lobsters' claws. They were a little Egyptian-looking headdress on their heads. Come on, you two, said one of them. Uh-oh, said Nev. Who's that, I said. Gar, said Nev. We are really in trouble now. What kind of trouble could I be in, I asked. I just got here. Come along, slave said the guard. The giant and showed me and left. Hey, cut that out, I said. Shut up, slave, said the guard. I'm not a slave, I said. I'm a citizen of the United States of America. Move, said the guard. 
we didn't have any choice but to go along with the shopping. Where are they taking us? I whispered to never taking. Back to the pyramids, she said. The pyramids are in Egypt, I said. Not this, she said. She said, we traveled for what seemed like months. It was probably only 50 feet, though. I had to crawl over the huge round piece of metal. It was brownish in color, and it had some breaded guy's face on it. The bearded guy turned out to be Abe Lincoln. The round piece of metal was a penny. Then we passed by a brown mountain that sank to high heaven. That turned out to be a pile of dog poop. The flies buzzing around it were bigger than I was. They had these huge bludgeon eyes. Their buzzing sounds like airplane engines. They kept trying to dive down, dive bomb me. I think they were worried I wanted to sell their poop. Just past Dark Field Mountain, we saw them, the pyramids, gigantic anthills shaped like the pyramid in Egypt. Gosh, this had to be the same anthills I had stopped Verna from stomping on. Those sands of safe ants were carrying blocks of stone up the pyramid. Only they weren't blocks of stone, they were grains of sand. Hey, Nap, I said. Why are all those ants carrying grains of sand up the pyramid? Because top ants can man order faster. Who is who the heck is top ant Cameron? Our peril queen. She forces us to build them as mon monuments to her greatness. Some monuments, I said. Every time it rains, the, her monuments get washed away. Queen Todd doesn't care. She has lots of slaves to rebuild them. How come everybody obeys her? We have no choice. She's very big. She's a hundred times as big as we are. You can't disobey something that big. Shut up, said the, said the guard. Speaking during work hours is tricky for beta. Sorry, I said. By the way, when do we get off or get off work around here? You get off work five minutes after you die. Wow! And I thought the teachers in my school were strict. I was clearly in a lot of trouble. If I could think of a way out of it soon, I might never see my mom or my dad again. They be running all over New York looking for me, and here I be a slave in an Egyptian ant colony. I had to come up with some kind of a plan, and soon. But what? Chapter four. The guards dragged us all the way to Queen Tut's throne and threw us on the floor. The throne was decorated with stuff that I absolutely thought was cool. Tin full from gum wrappers, glittered tinsel from all the Christmas trees. Your Royal Highness, said the bigger of the two girls, these two have escaped from the war forest. What do you want us to do to them? Chop off their tiny heads, said the loud, raspy voice. Queen Todd was the biggest ant I had ever seen. She had on a gold crown and slave ants were fanning her with beds of glass. Thrust. She leaned down and squeezed at us. Who are they? Queen Todd shouted. Slaves, your highness, said the guard. Runaway slaves. Ants? Yes, your highness, said the guard. I am not an ant, I said, I am a boy. You're not a boy, roared the guard. Boys are as big as mountains. Boys are bigger than ho her royal highness, Queen Tut. What, shouted Queen Tut. Sorry, your highness, said the guard. Boys are almost as big as her royal highness. What, shouted Queen Tut. Sorry, said the guard. Boys are nowhere near as big as her royal highness. That's better said the queen. 
much better. Do you have the roll axe to chop off their tiny heads? No, Your Highness, the roll axe is not yet back from the roll sharpener. The roll sharpener is a little back up because of the holidays and all. Oh, poop, said the queen. First, Queen Todd runs out of chocolate. Then, the royal eggs isn't here to chop up heads. Nothing is going right today. Excuse me, your majesty, I said. But, I, but did you say you ran out of chocolate? A Hershey bar that was supposed to last a year, said the queen. Queen Todd has eaten it in only a month. Suddenly, I had a plan, a plan to save our tiny heads from being chopped off. Uh, I know where there's more chocolate, I said. Would you like me to get it? You can get more chocolate, cried the queen. She seemed delighted, like a little kid. Chocolate for Queen Todd. Queen Todd loves chocolate. Chocolate is Queen Todd's very favorite food. If you let us, your majesty, Neff and I could live now, I said, and bring back chocolate for you in less than an hour. Neff looked as if she wanted to kiss me. Bring back chocolate for Queen Todd, and you will be handsomely rewarded, cried the queen. Well, go right now, your majesty, I said. Then go already, she shouted. I grabbed one of Neff's arm, or maybe it's was a leg, and we took off. It was a long way back to the picnic blanket. I mean, for my old self, it would have been only a few steps, but for my new and sad self, it was months. I didn't even know which way to go, so left led the way and gave really great senses of direction. It's like they have mobile oil roads maps in their heads or something. Tiny pebbles in our past seem like boulders. Little puddles look like lakes. We look as big as telephone poles. How come you guys have Egyptian name and stuff? I asked. Are you copying Egypt or what? No, Egypt copied us. Excuse me, I said. That ants have been on Earth a hundred million years. Longer than even the dinosaurs. Egypt has been around for a few thousand years. So, who's copying who? Yeah, I see your point, I said. So, tell me, Neff. Do you have a husband and some cute little aunt lover at home? Neff or Tisky started laughing. I don't know if you've ever seen an aunt laugh. Ho, ho, she said. She cried, ho, ho, ho. What's so funny, I asked. Nobody in our colony has mates except Queen Tut, which is fine with me because the guys in our colony are real losers. In what way? They don't do a thing. They eat, they mate, and they die. Anything that gets done here gets done by the females. Those Queen Tut make all the babies? Yeah, she lays at hundreds of thousands of eggs every year. She has four thousand children. You can't believe what bad time is like. That sure is a lot of babies. It sure is. They are cute at the lever stage though. You could, you should see those little smiles. You could just eat them up. Some do get eaten up. As a matter of fact, really? By whom? Hungry guards. I didn't know what to say to that. So I didn't say anything. The rest of us step out, chew out leaves and spit them out. The mold that grows on the chewed out spit out leaves is what we eat. It's yummy. I think I'll stay with cheeseburgers. Okay, if you prefer that cow top with full and hardened milk, then shoot yourself. There was no point in arguing. So we traveled up. Suddenly, I heard something, something big, it was crashing through the brush just behind us. Zap, the Neff, run for your knife, life. I looked back, crashing toward us was the ugliest thing I've ever seen. It had a low, flat body, creepy feelers that 
that were longer than his body. Slugging eyes, scary jaws, a face you see only in horror movies. Yes, a crocodile, a crocodile the size of a school bus. The end of chapter one to chapter four. The exact boss. Evil Queen Tut and the Great Ant Pyramids by Dan Grimber. Chapter five. I was running as fast as my little legs could carry me. Tiny drops of sweat were pouring down my face. I was freezing so hard I saw my ancestors' lungs would burst. Neff was running fast too. Pretty soon she passed me. That wasn't surprising. I mean, she had four more legs than I did. I looked back. The crocodile was gaining on me. This was it. This had. This was how I was going to die, not of old age when I was a hunter, but eaten by a cockroach, my life could end that way, it was too stupid. I looked back again, the crocodile was almost on top of me, then suddenly I heard a whooshing noise, something enormous hit the ground like an earthquake at the same time, I heard a sing Cutting crouching sound. A giant foot had come down on top of me, on top of the crocodile. The giant foot in the giant white sneaker with red stripes on it. Roach guards squirted out all over. Some hit me. Oh, Zach, are you alright, Colnaf? Yeah, what? That was a close one. Watch out, you don't get the step on yourself. I was pretty shaky. I didn't know where the giant food had come from. Probably one of the guys in my class. Whoever it was had saved my life. But I'd probably never be able to thank it. It made me feel awful. I was still alive. But what good did it do me? I wanted my old life back. Yeah. Up ahead of us, I saw something fuzzy and blue. It looked about three feet thick. I couldn't see how far it stretched, but it was huge. It looked about the size of a big lake. Then I realized what it was. The, uh, it was the age of one of the picnic blankets. We made enough. We are at one of the picnic blankets. That jar of chocolate is very close by. We crept along the edge of the blanket. There was a lot of junk on it. A bra a big brown leather baseball mitt. A big new baseball with giant red stitching. A gigantic green canvas backpack as tall as a building. And not far from the backpack, the plastic jar filled with chocolate cover ads. Hooray! Resting against the jar was the plastic bag with the shrink away packets. The cause of all my trouble. But I realized something. If we climb to the top of the bag of shrink away, I'd be able to get inside the jar. Wait a minute. Suddenly I realized something else. The bag of shrink away. My tiny brain had a big idea. A very big idea. Tell me now, I said, what would happen if Queen Tut weren't so big? What do you mean? I mean, what if Queen Tut suddenly started shrinking? What if she shrunk down in our size, or even smaller? Would anybody still take orders from her then? No, of course not, but nothing could ever make her shrink like that. Maybe there is something, I said. Do you see the stuff inside the bag? What? Listen, I shrank down to end size because I ate a lot of this stuff. It's something called shrink away. What shrink away? Dive pow powder. Very strong stuff. Very expensive. If you bring some back to the royal chamber and feed it to Queen Todd, then maybe she'd drink. She'd shrink too and we'd be rid of her. What do you think? It's worth a try. 
All we had to do now was get a few grains out of one of the packets and carry them back, along with some chocolate. Nav and I tried to scramble into the bag. It was still shut. I couldn't pull it open. What do we do now? I asked Nav. Instead of answering, she chewed the whole of the plastic and crawled in it. Cool. It was hot and sweaty inside the plastic bag. We were standing on a packet of shrink away. Without my asking, Nav chewed a hole inside of the packet we were standing on. Be careful, Nav, I said. You chew up a tiny bit of one of those grains you get so small I won't even be able to see you. We lift out a few grains of shrink away. They were spiky white and the size of some curbs. As we stood looking at the grains, grains, the ground began to shake. Uh oh, said Nav. We better go. I carried the grains of shrink away outside and looked around. The shaking had stopped, and I saw them, two gigantic feet, attached to the feet were legs as tall as big around as the trees in Redwood National Forest. And above the legs, way above them, loomed Looming like a mountain in the clouds was the biggest spot I had ever seen in my entire life. Suddenly, without warning, it started falling right toward us like an asteroid. We were about to be set on. Chapter 6 Falling bad, falling bad, I screamed. I pushed Ness out of the way just in time. The gigantic, the giant touch missed us. By the inches, the wind from the landing blew us a couple of yards away. I held onto the shrink away with all my might. Whew! Say, Zach, said Nav, you saved my life. That would have been a horrible way to die. Who, who the heck belonged to the behind that almost killed us? Who else but Vernon? I rec recognized the naked shirt. I was so mad at him. I was thinking straight. Without stopping to worry about danger, I ran right up and bit him. I heard the tremulous shout, like the trumping of an elephant. Then a giant hand slapped where I had bitten. He just missed me. Well, that was stupid. Now scolded. You could have gotten killed. Come on, Zach. We better get back to the pyramids. Not so fast, Nav, I said. We've got the shirt away, but we still need the chocolate. What we have to do is stick some chocolate on the shirt away to make her want to eat it. Well, let's get the chocolate, said Nav. Wow! And then I realized the problem. There was chocolate inside the jar. Alright, chocolate covering up that end. Um, I said, Nav, this is something that I might do a lot. Where I go, Nav, you must not follow. Why cannot I help you? That is something I can never tell you, I said, dramatically. I mean, how do you tell a friend that her people were the main ingredient in the desert? Desert. Climbing into the corner of chocolate cover ants was pretty grim. It was worse than I would have amazed. imagined. I guess that's what happens when you become friends with an ant. I felt like poking it again. I tried not to look at the death ants bur buried in the chocolate. I broke off a large chunk of ant-free chocolate and I climbed out of the container as fast as I could go. Working quickly, Nav and I broke the chocolate into tiny pieces and smooshed them into the brains of shrink away. Now let's get out of here, I said. With both of us carrying the chocolate covered shrink away, we took off the we took off for the pyramids. We had to trick Queen Tut into eating the shrink away. If my plan didn't work, the poor Nav and her family will would be Slave this for life, so would I for that matter. Chapter 7 We returned to the throne room. So you are back, said the queen. She giggled. And what is that you hold in your tiny hands? 
Chocolate, your majesty, I said. Shut up, slap, shouted a guard. Did anyone tell you to speak? No, no, let him speak, commanded Queen Tut. Speak, slap, shouted the guard. We brought your chocolate, your ma majesty, I said. The finest chocolate candy in the kingdom. You will be rewarded, she said. Said the queen, handsomely rewarded. Now give the chocolate to King Tut. Never I started to hand the chocolate covered grace of shrink away to her. The guards sat down out of our hands and they handed them to Queen Tut. The queen gobbled them up in a single gulp. Good chocolate, she said. Semi sweet, not and not too filling. Glad you like it, your majesty, I said. I watched the peril queen closely. Nothing seemed to be happening to her. Maybe it would take a while. When I ate the shrink away, it didn't work on me right away. No, come up to think of it. It did. Have you brought any more chocolate? asked Queen Tut. No, your highness, said Neff. That's all we had. Okay, said the queen. Now chop off their tiny heads. What? I shouted. You can do that. Of course, Queen Tut can do that, she said. Queen Tut can do anything she pleases. Queen Tut is the boss. But you told us we are going to be rewarded. I cried. You will be rewarded, she said. As a special treat, after they chop off your head, we will put them on lovely wooden placards. They will hang on the wall in the royal chamber. It is the highest possible honor. You can't chop our heads, I shouted. We brought you chocolate. Take them away, commanded Quinta. They are becoming tiresome. The guards grabbed us roughly and began to drag us out. Suddenly, we heard a big blush. It came from the judge and queen. The queen stopped and looked at her. Neff and I looked to her. Look too. She seemed confused. She seemed dizzy. She seemed kind of sick. Queen Tut is feeling a little woozy here, she said. Queen Tut is feeling like maybe she's going to woofs. Are you sure the chocolate was a spoil? That was an ordinary chocolate fest. Fat though, I said. That was shirt away diet powder. I don't know why I called her faster. Probably because the most she could do to me now was refuse to put my head on the placard, and I didn't really care about that. Suddenly, the Aunt Queen shuddered. The guards rushed for her to help her. She fell off her tin full thrown onto the floor. She kept surgery and getting smaller. What is happening to Queen Tut? She shouted, What is happening to your majesty's royal highness? She shook like crazy and she sank some more. Help your parrot! She screamed to the guards. What can you do, what can you do your highness? Quinta doesn't know, but if you cannot help your parrot, then your parrot commands you to chop off your own heads. And don't you dare put on lovely wooden plus either, or you'll be sorry. The guards didn't know what to do. They just stood there as Queen Tut grew smaller and smaller and smaller. Soon she was only twice as big as us. Help me, she cried in a much smaller voice. Somebody help me. Now she was exactly the same size as now. Then she was only half that size. As soon we could barely see her at all. She was just at a dot on the floor, and then even the dot disappeared. She's gone, I yelled. Nap and I hugged each other. We are free, she said. No, you're not, said the guard. We've been ordered to chop off your head. You were also ordered to chop off your own house, said Nap. Are you going to do that too? The guard looked at each other. Then they shouted. Ah, uh, you do have a point there, slave, said the guard. I'm not a slave anymore, Nap, said Nap. And you're not guards anymore. We're all free ants now. We can do whatever we want. Queen Tut is dead. The guards look at each other again. Sounds right to me, said one of them. Hey, me too, said the other. Well, I hope there are no hard feelings, said the other. You guys take care. Hundreds of ants who heard what happened crowded around the throne. 
The Queen Tart is dead, Neff announced. We are free and snow. The cat and cheered. She turned to me. And it's all thanks to Zack, she said. You have seen my people. You must become our new leader. The and cheered some more. Zack of for Perot. They shouted Zack for Perot. Oh, no thanks, I said to the crow. I'm not even an ant. If anybody should lead your people, it ought to be Nefertiti. The crow went well. Nefertiti for Perot. They shouted Nefertiti for Perot. But I'm not big enough to be a queen, said Nef. I'm only worker size. Eat the roll leaf move, yelled one of the ants. Well, said Nef. Or Katie, I suppose I could, but I sure have to eat an awful lot of royal leaf moves to get as big as a queen. Wait, what was this I was hearing? I looked with Nef right in the eye. Is that how queens grow to be so big? I asked. From the mold on chew up spit of leaves? Well, she said, it's a special kind of mold. We make it just for queens. I didn't want to get to work up, but there maybe there was hope for me. What do you think would happen to me if I ate some of that stuff? I asked. You'd probably throw up, she said. Could I try some anyway? Are you serious? I think so, I said. It may be my only chance to get human size again. Nav went over to the matchbox next to the rose room. She pulled it open and took out some nasty looking stuff. She handed it to me. This is it, I asked. The special mold you fit only to ant queens? The kind that grows on chewed up speed of wave? Yes, she said. I sniffed the stuff. It smelled pretty yucky. It smelled pretty moldy. If I ate it, would it make me grow or would it make me dead? But what choice did I have? I wanted to go back to my friends and my family. I miss Spencer and Andrew Clancy. I even miss Verna. Well, almost. I took a taste of the limo. It was just as awful as I thought it would be, but I kept eating it. The good news was it wasn't poison. The bad news was I was still exactly the same size I was before I ate it. I guess it doesn't work on humans, I said sadly. I'm sorry, Zach. What will you do now? I don't know, I said. I think I'll back, I go back to the picnic. Maybe I can find Mrs. Common Lever. Maybe I can climb up in her ear and talk to her. Remember she once said somebody put a bug in her ear. Goodbye, Zach, said Neff. She and all the ants wave lots of arms at me. My people will never forget what you did for us. We shall build a statue in your honor. You will always have a home with us. Goodbye, Neff, I said, and then I took off again into the walls of Central Park. Chapter 8 I had never felt so alone. What was going to become of me? How would I ever live as a bug? At least I wasn't hungry. I ate enough leaf mold to last me for days. I passed by Dog Poop Mountain again at the huge penny. But I couldn't find the picnic blankets. Had the cats gone home? If they did, there was no way I would ever find them. I sat down on the ground and closed my eyes. I was thinking very seriously of crying when I heard something. A quick cracking voice. Then a popping noise. Then nothing. Then another cracking noise, noise and a popping noise. Then I felt a thing tingling all over my body. And guess what? My arms started stretching. I watched in amazement. My arms got to be twice as long as they were before, and they stopped growing. The same thing happened to my legs, and my neck, and my... And then nothing. I waited. Sure enough, there were more cracking and popping noise. I was growing again. I had now grown right off of my leaf toga. I was... Start naked again. I must have been at least a foot tall by now. I look around. Yes, about 50 yards ahead of me, I saw them. The pink knee blanket. Thanks heavens. Just then, I had another growth spurt. It happened faster this time. I searched madly for my clothes. 
I couldn't find it anywhere. Has somebody stole, stolen them? Now I was two feet tall. Now three. A huge square ran by and stopped in his trucks. He stared at me. You could tell he was trying to decide whether to take a bite out of me. Then I grew another foot. I rolled at the square. He took off. I was almost back to my normal size. The leaf mold had really worked. And there in the bushes were my clothes. I rushed to put them up. I just I was just stepping into my pants when I heard a voice behind me. Young man, what are you doing in the bushes with your clothes off? I turned around. It was Mrs. Common Levin. She had a weird expression on her face. Ah, uh, hi, Mrs. Common Levin, I said. You haven't answered my question, Mrs. said Mrs. Common Levin. I'm waiting. Well, I said, do you want a nice normal answer or do you want the truth? The truth. Okay, the truth is I ate two packets of Vernon's strawberry and I shrank to the size of an ant. I didn't fit into my clothes anymore, but this nice ant named Nefertiti made a leaf token for me. So then I became a slave in an ant colony that was building pyramids for this mean and queen named Tuck and Neheman. Neheman. Did you know the queens are a whole lot bigger than other ants? Yes. About a hundred times as big, in fact, said Mrs. Kamalapa. Alright, so then Nap and I have fed this ant queen a few grains of sugar with covered in chocolate, and she shrank down to nothing. Then Nap gave me some special stuff that they give only to ant queens live home, said Mrs. Kamalapa. Right, it tasted yucky, but then I grew back to my normal size, and here I am, and that's pretty much what happened. She looked at me carefully for a moment. I had no idea what she was thinking. Well, that she said Mrs. Common Levin. It sounds as if you had a much more interesting picnic in the park than the rest of us. If you like tomorrow in class, you can give a special talk on and up for an extra critic. But if you, if I were you, I'd leave out of the part about your shrinking and being part of the colony. It really happened though, I said. I didn't say it didn't, she answered. I buttoned my shirt and walked back to the guys. Hey, hey, Zach, said Spencer. Where have you been? Studying ants, I said. You were gone for at least 20 minutes, said Spencer. Is that all? I asked. I was sure I'd been gone for several hours, but that was probably in ant time. You were studying ants for the whole 20 minutes, asked Andrew. How come it took that long? Well, I said, if you want to know the truth, I actually joined an ant colony. Oh yeah, said Andrew. I joined an ant colony once. It took me only 15 minutes though. Vernon came up rubbing his waist. The trouble with picnics, he said, is all the darn bugs. Do you know one bit me right on my waist? I started to giggle. Then I looked at Vernon's feet. I couldn't believe my ears. He was wearing white sneakers, white sneakers with red stripes, the same sneakers that had squashed the giant crocodile. Vernon Matifol was the kid who saved my life. Chapter 9 When I got home from the picnic, Dad asked me how it had gone. I said fine. Anything exciting happened? He asked. Not really, I said. L later I tell him about my adventures, but right now I was a little tired from carrying grains of sand and being chased by crocodiles and all. You know something, Zach? Said that. I think you're looking taller. That made me stand against the kitchen doorway. He makes pe pencil marks there to record my height. He measured me only a couple of weeks ago. I've grown an inch and a half from the special leaf mold. I've been, I've gone back many times to the place, the part where we had the picnic. I taken a magnifying glass and crawled all over the place, but I've never been able to find those pyramid shaped antennas or never take this colony. I know they're out there somewhere though. And when 
actually are just a tiny exercise statue of your of yours truly. Hey, top that one if you can, Andrew Clancy. The end of the Zach Falls Evil Queen Todd and the Great Ant Pyramids.